Hi there and welcome to the video. My name's Gareth and today we're going to be going through the Liquify tool and by the end of this video you'll be an absolute master and you'll be super confident in using it in your own project. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to select this layer here and go to the filter menu and choose Liquify from the drop down box. Now by the end of this video you'll know what everything on this screen does and I'm going to go through them one by one starting with the toolbar on the left hand side. So let's go up to the very first one. And as you can see, if you hover your mouse cursor over, it'll come up with the name of the tool. So this is the smudge tool. And I'm just going to take this to the center of his face and just start playing around with his nose just to show you what it does. Now, this is what most people think of when they think of Liquify tool, whether it's in Photop, Photoshop, or any other software. And it's that kind of pushing and pulling method where you can just drag the pixels around, stretch them around, and you can make people smile change expressions, um, you know, do all sorts of crazy stuff, even out bumps in the hairline. You can do anything and everything with this. It's fantastic. I mean, a lot of people take it too far, but if you're just having fun and making a funny picture of your friend or something, you can't really go too far. You can just go wild and have fun. But that's what the, um, that's what the smudge tool is anyway. And this brings us neatly onto the second tool, which is the reconstruct tool. Now, if I click this, just quickly before I go into this tool, on the right-hand side of the page, there's a reset button. If you click that button, it will take the image back to its original state. So it'll undo all of the liquify that you've completed. Whereas if you click the reconstruct tool, you can brush over selected areas, like I'm going to go over his side of his mouth. And it's almost like an undo brush for liquify. So as you can see, I'm brushing over his nose and his mouth and the areas that I've previously liquefied start to return to their original shape, which is really handy because you can then do all kinds of changes, but then reduce them in areas where you want them to show a bit less. So if I say, oh, I don't like how I did his nose at all, brush over that to take his nose back to how it was, but the right hand side of his mouth is still been liquefied. So it almost looks like he's got a smirk now. Whereas if I brush over that as well, it's going to bring his mouth slowly back to the original. And if I want to bring it completely back to the original, of course, I can click the reset button. So that's a really handy tool. Now, the third one down is the smoothen brush. Now, I'm going to have to zoom in to show you this one because it's quite a subtle effect. And I'll show you what it does. So if we look at his shoulder here, I'm just going to grab my grab my smudge brush and I'm just going to create some fake bumps like some bumps up some bumps down so it's a little bit lumpy a bit uneven and what this brush does it's really a fix for cases where you've tried to smoothen out an area yourself with the smudge tool and you've tried to flatten bumps and all this kind of thing and and it's better but it's not very smooth still because it's, if you use a small brush it's very hard to create a completely smooth surface by pushing and pulling with the smudge tool. I've exaggerated it here so you can clearly see. But if you get the smoothing tool and you brush over that area, what it's going to do, as you can see here on his shoulder, it almost looks like it's the same as that previous reconstruct brush and it's taking it back to the original, but it's not actually doing that. What it's doing is it's averaging out and trying to even out the contours from the previous liquify. So if you've tried to make an area smooth and it still ends up looking a bit lumpy bumpy, if you run this smooth and brush over it, it will try its best to figure out what it needs to change to make that area a nice smooth curve. So it's just really useful if you've been working with the brush, usually when the brush is too small, and um, trying to make an area nice and smooth, and it still looks a little bit off, try the smooth and brush, and uh, you'll be surprised at how much it can really help. Okay, so on to our fourth tool, and this one is twirl. Now I'm gonna increase the size of my brush for this, just so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna click it right in his nose and hold it down. And as you can see, it does exactly as you think it does. It twirls pixels. Now, this can be a bit silly and, you know, it looks like something that you wouldn't really practically use for anything. And it's true. It is a bit of a abstract one. You know, you can make really silly pictures, but it, it is good in some instances. Like 
I did a photo once that was like a cappuccino shot from above and it had a little bit of foam in the top of the coffee, as you would expect. And, but it, it just looked a bit uninteresting. So I could take this tool and click it over the top and actually make a swirl in the foam in the top of the coffee. And just sort of for an example. So it's worth playing around with, even if it's just for fun. But one bonus tip that not many people know about is if you click down and hold, you'll notice it always rotates clockwise. But if you hold the Alt key and then click and hold down, it actually makes the tool rotate counterclockwise. So you can rotate things in both directions, just depending on whether you have the Alt key clicked, um, sorry, held down or not, which is definitely worth knowing. Right, moving on to the next tool on the list, we have Shrink. Now, this is also known as Pucker in some old um, software that I remember using, or Pinch in others. And I click it over his eye, and it's quite obvious what it's doing. It's pinching the pixels in towards the middle of your brush. And the larger your brush, the bigger area will be affected. So you can definitely have some fun with this one. And then, so it's, that's a very simple brush. Um, easy to use and it does exactly that and the counterpart to this brush is one in this software called blow but it's sometimes called bloat in other softwares and that does exactly the opposite so if i click it over his nose and hold you'll see it kind of inflates i think it's called blow because it's like blow up like to inflate um and again you can have some real fun with this on pictures of your friends or whatever so let's reset that and the last the last creative tool in this list is one that isn't used very often, but it can be quite useful in the right circumstances. Push left, it's called. So we'll click on that and I'll show what it does. Now, it'll either push left or push right, depending on if you move the brush up or down. So I'll show you what I mean. Let me put the brush up to the side of his head on the left-hand side of the shot, and I'll click and I'll drag it down and watch what happens around the side of the brush. So how this tool works, is it takes any pixels that are within your brush size and it will move them either to the left or to the right, depending on if you go up or down and try to put them into a flatter shape. So if I give another round of that and I go down again, you can see it's pulling everything across and you can give them a really square head doing this. You can flatten objects off and almost turn curves into squares doing this. And if I wanted to do the same on the other side, but I need to go up, because again, if I go down, it's going to move the pixels from the right to the, um, sorry, from the left to the right. But in this case, obviously, it's not going to make his head flatter. It's going to pull his hair to the side. So you'd need to start at the bottom and go up. And um, yeah, again, this is one that you can just use to have fun with, but it has got some definitely useful practical applications as well. Obviously, you can go side to side and it will pull things up or push things down. And let's try it on his mouth here and it'll push everything down and you can make some, <laughs> uh, it's making me laugh just playing around with this, but you get what I mean. It's just, it's, it's quite a good tool that not many people use and I think it's great. So let's reset that. And underneath that, you've got the hand tool, which just moves the canvas around. But to be honest, I just hold the space bar down for that anyway. And that works just in the main photo P as well. Instead of going to the move tool, sorry, the um, hand tool, just hold the space bar down and move it round, and when you let go, it goes back to your normal tool. And then it's zoom in and zoom out. But again, I don't really use these because in here and in the main photo P, I use the command and plus minus key or control if you're on a PC and just to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so that's all the tools done. That is everything you need to know about the tools in photo P's liquify. So that's pretty straightforward, wasn't it? So now we'll come over to the parameters and there aren't many of these and we should be able to get through these no problem so we'll start on the right hand side here with size which is self-explanatory the size of your liquify tool um, as demonstrated by the circle shape on the screen like anything else density now this one's easier to show you than explain let me put the density right down near the bottom so to five or something like that i'm going to go to his right side shoulder to demonstrate this and I'm going to pull up. I don't actually know what happened there. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? Bit of a glitch. Let me pull up. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. 
I'm going to pull. And as you can see, the little spike that it's liquefying up with the smudge brush is actually quite small compared to the size of the brush. It's like it's taking it a little bit more from the center of the brush. But if I put the density right up near the top and do it again, you'll see it's pulling up a much bigger area in relation to the brush. Now I tend to leave this at about 50 and I'll tell you why, because you can get the same effect as a lower density, basically by just shrinking your brush in the first place and making it smaller. So I leave density where it's at and I just balance size and rate. And rate is just think of it as a strength guide. How strong do you want your liquify effect? So again, at number five, I'm swiping up on the same shoulder and as you can see, it's hardly moving. And this is useful if you're doing really subtle reshapes of things. But if you need to move quickly, obviously the higher value you set it, you know, it's going to operate very quickly. And I find that a general multi-purpose setting for this tool, if you just want to start somewhere that's not going to be too crazy in either direction, is um, just 50 and 50, 50 density, 50 rate and change your brush size. And I find this is kind of a good balance between having good control, but also not so strong that it's, you know, it sort of jumps all over the place and you end up having to backtrack. And underneath those three settings, we have this background checkbox. Now behind this image in my layer stack in PhotoP, I've got a duplicate of the same image. So if I click this button to activate, what this does is it shows you a transparent, a changeably transparent layer of what's behind it. So if I take this to 50, let's say 52% opacity or around 50%, something like that. And I now make some liquefying moves on this. You can see there's a ghosted image behind it of the original layer. And this is what the opacity slider is for. So you can change how transparent it is or not. And this is just a preview aid. So maybe if, if you're doing some work, you can see the original outline of what you're working on as you're liquefying to make sure you haven't gone too far or there's an area that you didn't mean to move and all that kind of thing. And you can just tick the checkbox to turn that off and just see exactly what you're liquefying. And as soon as you're done with your image, just click OK. And that's it, you're done. Now, I did promise a bonus tip at the end of this video, and here it is. The best way to work with a Liquify tool is to make the layer a smart object before you activate the tool. And to do this, just right click on the layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now, I'm going to go into smart objects in detail in a separate video, but just know that for the moment, making a layer a smart object means that any filters or tools you use on it are real time editable and they're classed as like smart filters. So in this case, we go to filter and we go to liquify. Once the layer is a smart object and we can make any kind of, of silly changes that we want and we'll click okay. And then after the fact, if you think, oh, do you know what? That looks a bit silly. I wish I hadn't have done that. Instead of starting again, you can just come down to here where it says smart filters, double click on the word liquify, and it takes you straight back into the liquify settings from last time. And you can adjust it and tweak it again, click OK. And you can forever go in and tweak that liquify because it's saved as a live filter. And also the little eyeball next to it, you can temporarily turn off the liquify just to see a quick before and after, which I find incredibly useful. Well, I really hoped you enjoyed this video and it taught you a lot more about how to use a liquify tool and you can have some real fun with it in your own projects. If you like this video, please smash the like button and I'd really love a subscribe if you feel that the content is worth it. But I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.